So good evening and um, welcome to tra uh, the Travel Group and Travel Concepts Tuesday Travel Talk, the Unexplored North Whiskey History and Artistry. I am Colleen and this is the lovely Darcy we have joining us tonight. Uh, but before I introduce Darcy, I wanted to quickly introduce myself. My name is Colleen Maxwell and I've probably spoken to most of you on the phone. Um, I have been working at the Travel Group for 15 years and I have experienced some amazing things along the way. If you joined us in March, you'll know that I've slept under the stars in the Sahara. I snuggled a koala in Australia and most recently I did zip lining in Costa Rica. Those were all super amazing, um, but I have also had the luxury of being to the Yukon twice and it's right in our own backyard. I have led a three dog dog sled team and those guys love to run and the power is unbelievable. I know that Darcy can attest to this as well. I've done a hair freezing contest and uh, yes, these lips have touched the toe. <laughs> And during the coldest, darkest days in the winter of 2019, I ran a five kilometer run in 40 below to raise money for Challenge White Horse and the Dawson City Food Bank, as did many of my coworkers. So ask them about it next time you talk to them. I first fell in love with the Yukon in the first grade when we were learning about artists and I learned about an artist called Ted Harrison. I fell in love with the simplicity and vibrancy of his work, as you can see from behind me here. He is one of the many talented artists that found love of the land and the people of the Yukon. And his work may look a little bit familiar because he designed the Expo 86 Yukon Pavilion. He said the land felt alive to him and the movement and so many of colors. If you've been to the White Horse, Air White Horse Airport, you will have seen his massive piece of art hanging on the wall of the arrival. Something else that is also vibrant is our guest this evening, Darcy. Darcy represents a company called Anderson Vacations who specializes in Canadian destinations. Darcy has been in the tourism industry for 30 years and moved to the West Coast from Bristol, Winnipeg. Darcy has traveled to many places around the world and many more in Canada. I think it's probably safe to say that she has been to every major city in Canada from coast to coast to coast. And I happen to know that Yukon is one of her favorite destinations. And without further ado, I introduce Darcy. Thank you so much, Colleen. And thank you to the Travel Group and Travel Concepts for having me and to all of you for joining me. And since you started on that awesome note about art from the Yukon, and I love Ted Harrison as well. I only recently started to learn about him, but I'm gonna show you a picture that I got when I was in the Yukon. It's very much a similar kind of style. And this artist, Emma Barr, I do believe she might've even studied um, Ted Harrison because it's kind of a similar kind of style. And I have a really amazing story about that before I share my screen. When I was just there, um, I've been to the Yukon six times. I was there um, in August, actually during COVID when before it was, uh, they shut us down to not travel there when there was the BC bubble. And I actually walked into a little gallery and saw that painting and we didn't have time to buy it. So we left and then, you know, it was in my mind, I was thinking about this, this painting uh, or print. And then when we were coming back and we were about to fly out the final day, I went, oh my gosh, we didn't pick up that print. We had about five minutes and we ran into that shop and as we ran inside the artist Emma Barr actually happened to be there signing um, prints. So not only did I get the one I wanted, she signed it for us and it turns out that it's of Tombstone Mountain and the day before I flew right beside Tombstone Mountain. So it's one of those pieces I will cherish forever and ever. Really, really special. So now I'm going to share my screen with you. Make sure I have the right PowerPoint. Here we go. Let me start it at the beginning here and call if you can just let me know that you can see it okay. Perfect. Yep, okay. Looks good. Right. Excellent. Thanks again to you and to everyone for joining us this afternoon. I have about 30 minutes. I love the Yukon so much. Colleen is absolutely correct. I'm a little bit addicted to it. I've already got another trip planned there. Um, and the good news is that they've just made the announcement that once you've had your second um, COVID vaccine, you can travel after May 25th, you can actually travel up to the Yukon. And let me tell you, they will welcome you with open arms. They need the tourism. And right now, it has never been a better time than to support local Canadian businesses 
especially tourism businesses, they can really use the support. Um, there's, you know, we've done lots of research. I work with Destination Canada, and there's a fact out there that says um, if two thirds of Canadians took their spend, their intended spend that they were going to use for international travel and spent it right here in our own backyard, it would not only save $150,000, but it would put back about uh, $19 billion back into our economy. So if you know, we don't have a lot of choices right now where we want to travel, but we're all chomping at the bit and we just want to get out there and travel. So let's get started. Uh, let me jump to my next slide. As Colleen mentioned, uh, my name is Darcy Guarderas and I'm the Director of Business Development. And I've traveled from coast to coast to coast. Uh, I've, I've even been to Tuk to Yuk Tuk and I know a few people from the travel group have been there as well, which is, uh, I'm very proud to say that. Anderson Vacations is a Canadian company. We are Calgary based. So if you're shopping with uh, Anderson Vacations through, through the travel group, you are supporting local. And as I mentioned, it's never been more important than right now. We love working with our travel partners at the travel group and travel concepts. Um, you're working with pro professional agents. And now that you've been through this whole situation, you know, there's never been a more important time than to work with travel consultants. They're there, they've got your back and they're there to help you and support you and guide you. So uh, I'm super glad that you're here today joining me and, uh, and these wonderful agents to share some great information. I think you might notice the right hand picture is uh, my good friend, Colleen. She's got... <laughs> She's got her, when she mentioned the the, uh, the toe, I will get into that in a bit. You but are sneaky. <laughs> I <stuck that. laughs> One of the things I love about the Yukon truly is the people. I mean, every time I go there, I meet the most interesting people. And I think the best word to describe many of them, it's quirky. They're just interesting and friendly and wonderful and I just, I just love it. And every time I go, I meet someone who has a story and they always seem to be willing to share that with me. So these are all people that I have met, including Colleen. Getting to uh, the Yukon is very, very easy. I'm just gonna look at my time and see where we're at. Okay, there we go. Uh, it's really, really easy. And of course, Air Canada flies there. And if you're an Air Canada you lover, that's great. They do fly there as well. But I always like to mention Air North because Air North is fabulous. If you're as old as I am, you might remember um, some of the older airlines like Canadian Airlines in the beginning or even Wardair. Reminds me of that, you know, maybe not quite as fancy as Wardair, but service. They have really great service and they have uh, freshly made meals that they make every single day. They even have special meals like they used to have in the olden days. And the best part, I'm sure Colleen can attest to this, is warm cookies you can smell them on the plane when you get on so i just love flying air north whenever i go there it's very easy to get there now i'm going to take you on a little tour of the yukon and we're going to start in whitehorse we're going to head straight down south to car cross and then up a little bit where you see haynes junction over here i'll just use my arrow on the left which is kluani national park is in this area and then up to dawson city right here i know this is not the best picture it's actually a, one of those stock photos but it was one of the best maps i could find that would show you would show you where exactly i'm going to take you there's much much more to um, the Yukon than just this area, but this is commonly the area that people do go to on their first journey or their first or second journey. Now you might be asking, what do I do if I go in the winter time and I'm from you know, Vancouver and I don't have those really warm clothes? Well, guess what? We've got you covered. We can take care of uh, clothing rentals for you. So just speak with your travel professional and they will work with us to arrange that you will get um, warm clothing when you get there and you get it all. You don't get the furry hat on the left, <laughs> the big fancy hat, but you do get the warm coat and they will provide a nice toque, um, ski pants, mitts, boots, the whole shebang. And it's fantastic. You will not be cold. Um, they're great, great clothing rentals. And so you don't have to worry about a thing. And the other thing is you don't have to worry about packing all that stuff with you because when you arrive, it's waiting for you. And if you're shorter or you're you no know, different size, it doesn't matter they have sizes for everyone even kids here's something i bet you didn't know about the yukon they have an incredible food scene often when we're talking about northern destinations people go oh yeah but you know it's in the north and it's so expensive for them to get food and you don't get a lot of variety well that's not true in the yukon in whitehurst in particular and in dawson city they have a fabulous um food scene and during the pandemic Two new restaurants have actually opened up in Whitehorse. I don't have them on this list because they are so brand new, but one is called Gather and it's um, inside one of my favorite places I'll tell you about in just a few moments. 
Who would have thought a place that's not anywhere near the ocean would have one of the best oyster houses in all of Canada? Wayfair, Wayfair is one of my favorites. Antoinette's is a Caribbean fusion restaurant. It's a must stop at. And they have a fabulous restaurant called Burnt Toast that has great breakfast. So something for everyone just completely blows me away when I go there. I can't wait to, uh, to visit all these restaurants. One of the wonderful stops, which is just outside of um, White Horse, is called the Yukon Wildlife Preserve. Now, this really does care for the Yukon's injured and uh, orphaned wildlife, and it's a must stop on your journey. It's about 25 minutes outside of White Horse. And anyone going to the Yukon is most certainly looking to encounter wildlife. And in many cases, you will. You'll see them in the wild, and I'll give you examples along the way. But to ensure that you see wildlife, you definitely want to stop here. You can do a guided walking tour or a little van tour around. And the guides are phenomenal. They are so well versed and they you can see muskox and wild, uh, you know, little foxes, arctic foxes and doll sheep and moose up close, baby moose. It's really, really amazing. And they, they will keep the animals for their lifetime. But the, the whole goal is to help them get back to nature. And if they can't, they will remain in this preserve and they'll live this fabulous life because it is huge and is made perfect for this the injured wildlife. Now, there's all these seasons you can go, and I love that you did a poll at the beginning uh, call because there's just so many times you can go. I've been to the, the uh, Yukon at least four times in the winter time, and so much that I've kind of that's kind of like my season. But I've also been there um, three times in the fall as well and so uh no two times in the fall pardon me and it's a great time to go as well but snowmobiling in the winter time is magic it's so much fun it's if you want to go really fast you can but if you want to just take a leisurely kind of snowmobile through these little trails with drippy icing snow coming down it's wonderful and i must tell you the last time i was there we were on a trail and i was we were taken by a guide and um he was yelling and screaming and going crazy because a giant mama moose and baby moose they ran right in front of our snowmobile and he's been living there his entire life and he'd never seen a moose up that close before in the wild so it was incredible and as you can see the gentleman in the middle we pulled over on the side and we had hot chocolate and told stories and it was so wonderful anyone of any age can enjoy this experience Ice fishing, when I was a kid, I used to go ice fishing in Alberta. And so I hadn't done it for years, probably, oh my gosh, 40 years I hadn't done it. This was fabulous. We didn't catch a single fish, but we sure had a great time. And you're out on this beautiful lake, incredible vistas. And we had like a barbecue, smoky barbecue on the ice. And I learned how to make a fire on the ice without melting the ice, which I thought was really cool. You'll learn a lot while you're there. As Colleen mentioned, dog sledding is wonderful. If you're an animal lover, like both Colleen and I are, um, you can snuggle the puppers. If you can, you know, you want to get close to them and snuggle them. There's no boundaries. They come right up and kiss your face. You also learn about the history and the indigenous culture that's related to dog sledding, which is really fascinating. And if you want to, if you really love it, you can actually go and spend three or four days up to a week learning how to mush your own dog team. So you're connecting with nature, you're connecting with yourself. I love being in there. And you know what, I should mention to you along the way, most of these photos are actually photos from a lot of my journey. So you can see actually what it is. So the one on the left, I'm in the dog sled um, myself taking this photograph. There's a fabulous, amazing race called the Yukon Quest. Now, this um, race, I just want to make sure I know where it's going from. It starts in Fairbanks and it goes to Whitehorse or vice versa. It's been canceled the last uh, year or so because of COVID, but I'm sure it'll be on again this year. I've been there twice for the Yukon Quest. I've been there for the beginning of the race. So these photographs, the top right hand picture is the beginning of the race early in the morning. You can meet the mushers. Now, when I say quirky, I mean quirky. These people have stories like you've never heard before in your life really amazing and then uh, they go for about 10 days on their own with their dog team and there are incredible stories of people you know near death experiences um so when they leave it's pretty exciting but even more exciting when they come back and this journey is in february you can make arrangements through your travel consultant to be up there at this time and when they come back and they finish in whitehorse you see these people after they've been on the trail for 10 days it is incredible absolutely amazing 
Now, everything I've shown you so far is outdoor cold stuff, but there's a really cool experience in Whitehorse called Lumel Glass Blowing Studios. And I have done this many, many times. In fact, the bottom left-hand picture, those are my glass um, paperweights that I made on my third or fourth time there. I have a wonderful wine glass that I made. Um, you go from being outside where it's very cold to inside where you actually get to blow glass. And when I walked in here the first time, I thought, I was gonna watch somebody else blow glass, but I actually got to blow glass myself and it became addictive. It's just an incredible experience. You can do a two hour um, experience here and I highly recommend it. Of course, you've got your, your local treasures like the SS Klondike that really feature the, um, the paddle wheel era. And of course, which leads us into the gold rush and the Klondike and all the incredible history that you will find in, in uh, the Yukon in particular, actually up in, in Dawson City. It's incredible. If you're a history buff, you could spend many, many days here. But before you head out of Whitehorse, I mentioned earlier that there is incredible Indigenous culture. There are uh, 14 First Nations in the Yukon, so many languages and dialects, and there's really a, a great celebration of these cultures, especially at the Kwanlin Dun Cultural Centre. You can go through the centre and see beautiful artwork and really experience some uh, incredible Indigenous storytelling. Now in the bottom photograph you see these um, colorful shacks. Those are actually artists in residence. So if you're going there in the summertime, local Indigenous artists will be inside these little shacks creating beautiful art and jewelry so you can see them talk to them and ask questions and then purchase something. So that little gift or souvenir that you bring back for yourself or for someone else really has special meaning because you actually saw the people who created it. I think that makes it really special. Okay, well, of course, you're going to hopefully see the Northern Lights when you're there. And so this is actually a picture that was taken in August. It's not the best picture, but the reason I put it into my PowerPoint is because this was taken from my hotel. So I'm in the city with light pollution, without being prepared, with a phone, not a great camera, and look at this. So you can only imagine what you can expect to see when you're out on the platforms and these beautiful um, Aurora viewing platforms that can be part of a package that your travel professional from the travel group and travel concepts can put together for you. I think I have another great shot. And again, this is from my cell phone. So it is truly magical to see the Aurora um, and you must see it once in your lifetime for sure. When you leave out of uh, Whitehorse, you definitely want to visit Car Cross. Car Cross is this really, really adorable um, sort of community, again, focusing on First Nation, Nations culture. And Car Cross is short for Caribou Crossing because they used to migrate through here. There's incredible sand dunes, as you can see in the top left-hand picture, because it has the um, world's smallest desert in Car Cross, which is really interesting and really, really neat. There's a, a carver here, his name is um, Keith Wolf Smarsh. And he, if you go into his carving shop, he has open doors, you walk in. He's there every time I've been and you can sit and have a conversation and learn about the culture. And he's, it's really fascinating. If I had more time, I'd tell you so much more about it. Then you're going to head up out of Car Cross up to Kluani National Park, which is like Haynes Junction area. Now this is where Mount Logan is, which is Canada's tallest peak. It is incredible. I just last August did a flight seeing trip over here and there's actually the largest ice field in North America. So you fly over the ice field and we actually landed on the ice field. It was amazing. We thought we'd have a 15 minute walk around and suddenly the pilot yelled, get back in the plane because um, all of a sudden a cloud came in and he said, if, we're, if we don't fly now, we'll be staying here. So it was really exciting and so beautiful. And in this area, there's Kathleen Lake on the left. You can see one of the most beautiful, pristine lakes ever. So this area is great for hiking, um, any kind of boating activities on the lake. Just, and if you're not a hiker, even for wonderful walks. And, um, but you do need to be careful because it also has the most, the largest genetically diverse number of grizzly bears in the world in this area. So please be safe if you go to Kloani National Park. Now, Dawson City, look at my time, how we're doing. Dawson City, this was the first time when I went in August that I'd been to Dawson City. I'm telling you, the coolest place ever. It really is like stepping back in time. 
all the buildings look like this. There's a city bylaw or town bylaw. You can't just build a new building. You've got to follow the code. So it's really difficult to figure out which buildings are new buildings and which buildings are old buildings, which is really, really cool. All the roads are not paved because there's permafrost and they just shift constantly with the uh, freezing and thawing, which I thought was really neat. In fact, there's these buildings called the kissing buildings that are kind of crooked. They kind of fall into one another that you can get a picture in front of. And I love the top picture because you see chichacos. And I was the first thing I said is, what's a chichaco? And they said, you're a chichaco. <laughs> Chico, chichaco is someone who comes up to the Yukon and doesn't dress properly because I wasn't wearing the, the warmest clothing when they saw me. It was August. I expected it to be a little bit warmer. So um, great little restaurants and things there. But I love Dawson City. Now, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. It's about six hours to drive from Whitehorse. So if you're driving up there, it's a bit it's about six hours. But of course, there's flights in between as well. But the drive is absolutely beautiful. Let's jump to the next one. What can you do in Dawson City? There's so much to do here. Panning for gold. You got to go to Diamond Tooth Gertie's because it's a little gambling saloon and they have a wonderful can-can show. It's really fun. And Diamond Tooth Gertie is actually a real person. She was a, a lady who ran this saloon and, and she was quite quiet and reserved apparently. And she actually had a diamond in between her two front teeth because when the gold rush was on, there was a lot of money rolling around. And people were like, what do I do with this money? So she decided to come up with a, the idea of putting a diamond between her teeth because she could do that because she could afford it. It is the gateway to nature because you can leave from Dawson City and head up the, um, the Dempster Highway. And in the summertime and fall, it is beautiful. In particular, the fall colors are magical. And some of the most beautiful vistas, mountain vistas I've ever seen anywhere in the world. I know that people do often say that Jasper is the most beautiful place in the world for mountains. And it is spectacular. It is. But man, when you're here, you think to yourself, like these wide open spaces, it's so, so beautiful. Okay, let's talk about the gold rush. So there's a whole bunch of history and I just love this photograph because you can see in the background an old photograph when the rush was going on. There was like 30,000 people there. And you know the stories of how these people came from Seattle and San Francisco and Vancouver, and they brought all this gear up there. The only way you could get up there was you had to bring a year's worth of supplies with you like with you. So it was a big deal to get there. And it took a long time. Sometimes it took months to get there. So a lot of people, by the time they got there, the gold rush was already over because it really only lasted about three years. But there was oodles and oodles of money, like I mentioned before. So when you have lots of money, lots of things start popping up like saloons and bars and houses of ill repute. So there's lots of things where there's a really fabulous um, bar called Bombay Peggy's that used to be a brothel and when you walk in it kind of has that really interesting vibe to it you get these really crazy t-shirts and things like that so it was considered the Paris of the north because there was so much uh, money there and people became overnight millionaires so really really interesting at one time there was about 30,000 people there during the gold rush but now there's only about 5,000 people in uh, in uh, Dawson City and of course, as Colleen mentioned, you've got to drink uh, the drink with the sour toe cocktail. Um, and that is a real toe. Yes, it is. And it's disgusting. Um, but it has to touch your lips. So um, you can do this. I think you even have to pay five bucks to do this. <laughs> so <laughs> you're paying to have someone's toe put like on your lips. And it's a frostbitten toe. And I do believe that they're actually on their seventh toe and they're always looking for new toes just in case something happens to the one that they have there. So um, don't forget, you've got to do that when you're in Dawson City. Now, I'm going to quickly talk about a few places because the, you know, everyone goes into Whitehorse and there's so much to do and see around Whitehorse. It's so fun. And then always it's kind of traditionally to go up to Dawson City. But I tell everyone, don't leave the Yukon without spending at least two to three nights at one of these spectacular mountain lodges or lake lodges they are amazing. Now I'm going to showcase quickly three of them. See how we're doing for time. We're doing okay. Three of these lodges, three of my favorites. 
Um, I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I do. Um, Northern Lights Resort. Now this is it's about 20 minutes outside of Whitehorse, so it's not hard to get to, but look at those chalets with those windows. You're laying in your bed, looking out the Northern Lights. Great communal feel to this resort. Really lovely. Um, it's one of my absolute favorites and it's so convenient to the city. And the people who run this, it's a, a gentleman named Wolfgang. He's from Germany and the best hospitality you'll ever find. Another of my favorites is the Boreal Ranch. And this is about 30 minutes from Whitehorse. This is an inclusive experience. Some of the best food you can ever have. Lots of great outdoor activities, both summer and winter. A lot of snowshoeing, even tobogganing, things like that, cross-country skiing. Um, what I loved about this, they have an honor bar. So you have little mugs in the kitchen where all the wine and the beer and everything is. If you want to have a drink, you take a, a poker chip and the, uh, the color of the poker chip tells you if you're having a whiskey or you're having a wine, you throw it in a mug and at the end of your stay, whatever whiskey or whatever poker chips are in your mug, you just pay for that. And it gives you that kind of fun sense of like, I belong here, this is a really comfortable place, very social. And I should say that makes me think of, you know, something that's really important. All of the destinations, all of the places, and all of our partners that we work with in the Yukon um, are belong to the safe stamp, which means they're all COVID friendly safe. So, you know, that's really an important feature. And I should have mentioned that early on in the presentation, but that is absolutely a priority for all of our guests. And that's why the Yukon is so fantastic because it is wide open spaces. There's lots of room to social distance. One of the neatest things that they do is they have these um, social distancing posters everywhere to show you how far you should stay apart from each other. And so they'll show like a moose in between, you know, so you should stay a moose apart or you should say um, six raven apart, that kind of thing. So that's kind of fun. And then the last lodge I wanted to tell you about is a fly-in lodge. You can drive there as well, but you can fly there. And I highly recommend if you have the opportunity to do a flight seeing experience, whether it's up in Dawson City, over the Hubbard Glacier, or here, I would definitely do it, to take you to Southern Lakes Lodge. Now, on the way there, these two pictures were taken on the same flight. So it was about a 45 minute flight and you leave out of Whitehorse and you can actually get there in probably about 20 minutes, but I didn't know what to expect. And as we're leaving Whitehorse, you fly over these beautiful lakes, absolutely beautiful. We actually saw an albino moose from up above in the air. And you get quite low, so we did see quite a bit of uh, wildlife, doll, sheep and things. Beautiful, beautiful vistas. These again are both photographs I took with my cell phone. And on the right hand side, you actually fly right over a glacier. And of course there's commentary the entire time and it's just amazing. And then you arrive at Southern Lakes Lodge. Again, one of my absolute favorites. It's about an hour drive, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, it's about, no, sorry. It's about two hour drive. So a little bit further on Whitehorse. Very secluded, but these beautiful cabins all looking over the ocean with our the ocean, the lake, <laughs> over the lake. So you can see the lake. And here's my favorite shot. This was first thing in the morning, my last day there, about six o'clock in the morning. I'm standing on the deck of my little um, cabin looking out. And I think it would just be great for all of us to have that moment to disconnect, you know, from our cell phones and listening to the news every night and hearing what's going on and just really be standing looking at this beautiful lake and reconnecting with ourselves. So I invite you to please talk to one of your amazing travel professionals with the travel group and travel concepts um, about a possibility of joining uh, us um, or going on your own. Uh, we have, we do have some fully escorted tours as well. I should mention that or self-drive vacations. Um, this year they do not have motorhome rentals. They've, they've stopped them for uh, the season, but they will be back for next year. I invite you to, um, to explore the Yukon and enjoy that as well. Now I should mention that we are, you know, Colleen and I are coming up with some plans for a future um, webinar presentation for you. We haven't chosen the specific date as of yet, but um, Churchill, Manitoba is another one of my favorite places. I've been there both in the summertime and in the fall, which would be their winter. And I will be going there again this year on July 13th. Fingers crossed, all things good happening with what's going on with COVID. So we're hoping to do another presentation and share some amazing experiences with you in Churchill. So that's it in a nutshell. Colleen, did you have any questions come up at all? 
Um, yeah, you mentioned it right at the beginning, but I uh, thought maybe you could mention it again about uh, UConn opening. Do you think the UConn will open like they did before with the BC bubble before they open to the rest of the world? No, I, I think they're going to open it up pretty much. Um, they, they've come up with this strategy of two shots. Once you've had your uh, double dose of the COVID vaccine, that it will be open up. So after May 25th, they will be accepting visitors who have proof of double vaccination, like having two shots. And I don't, as far as I know, it doesn't matter where you're from, as long as you've had the two shots, you will be entering. There was talk of doing a BC bubble first and then adding Alberta and then slowly opening it, but with the vaccination process going really, really smoothly. And I am in contact with people in the Yukon every single day. And I know that they have really, I mean, they're pretty much all vaccinated. Many of them, the majority of them have had their second vaccination. And life there is getting pretty back to normal. They are masking, but um, as of May 25th, restaurants will be at full capacity. So it's pretty oh, exciting. Wow. Um, and then maybe if you could just go over sort of the best seasons, the best time of year to see the Northern Lights. That's always the sure. top of people's lists to... Yeah, for sure. So the best time is January, February, March. It's never guaranteed because Mother Nature's in charge, of course. Uh, so uh, that's a great time. However, in August, late August, two times that I've been there, we have seen the Northern Lights in August. So um, that's also a great time. What's nice about the fall is not only the fall colors, but less bugs not that there's I never had an experience with having too many bugs, but people have commented um, less bugs. And um, the Northern Lights, when they bounce off the lakes, are truly spectacular. Fantastic. So uh, yeah, that's, that's everything that uh, all the questions we have for tonight. I am going to be sending a follow up email to any to everybody. So if you think of something afterwards, of course, just reply to that and I'll make sure that we get that answered for you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for those who are continuing to come to our Tuesday Zooms. And thank you for all the newcomers. We hope to see you in June. Uh, thanks again. Thanks, Darcy, and have a great evening. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. See Bye. You soon.